Hey there! In the last three videos, I showed you how you can install your ZigBee devices using ZHA, ZigBee to MQTT, or DCONS. In this video, I'm going to compare the three and tell you what my opinion is, which version you can use best for your ZigBee devices. I was always wondering what ZigBee integration would work best in Home Assistant for me. I mean, I always used Decons, but I knew there was also ZHA and ZigBee to MQTT, and I didn't really know which one was the best. And I heard a lot of people on the internet shouting about ZigBee to MQTT, about ZHA, about Decons, and then I thought maybe I should set all three of them up and see what happens. Just see what works best for me. So I decided to do that. In my last three videos I showed you how you can install ZHA, ZigBee to MQTT or Decons to control your ZigBee devices. At the beginning I didn't know what I was going into, but it turned out to be quite a big rabbit hole. If you haven't seen those videos yet, the links are in the description below, so check them out. I ran into a lot of issues and a lot of fun stuff and I'm going to share everything now in this video with you. So let's go into this. The process was as follows. For every integration or add-on, I had to start with a fresh Home Assistant installation. And then I installed the integration or the add-on. So ZHA or ZigBee to MQTT or Decons. Then I showed the user interface, how it looks. And then I started to pair the same devices to all the three integrations. After that, I tried to add the entities in Home Assistant to the dashboard to show you what you can see in the dashboard for that specific integration or add-on. And finally, I created an automation and I tested the automation and that automation was basically switch a light or a smart plug based on motion. Then the devices that I tested during this whole process were three devices. One is the IKEA light bulb. It's a color light bulb. The second one is a popular motion sensor. It's the Akara motion sensor. And the third one is a popular smart plug, which is the Blitzwolf smart plug with power metering. If you want to order one of those, the links are in the description below. The coordinator that I used is the Combi 2 stick. That's the only coordinator that I have, but you can also use other coordinators, of course. But this is the one that I used. I already told you the integrations and add-ons that I tested. They were ZHA, which is a default integration in Home Assistant, ZigBee to MQTT, which is an add-on, and Decons, which is also an add-on. The total list of ZigBee devices that is supported by integrations can be found in this list. As you can see, it's a huge list with devices. And for every device, you see if the integration supports that device, which is really handy to know before you start installing an integration. Now, let's start with ZHA. Installing ZHA was super easy. It was installed in minutes it worked really well. The whole installation went without any problems. ZHA supports a lot of coordinators. In fact, it supports the most coordinators of all the integrations that I tested. Then the device support. ZHA supports a lot of devices. Not all of them, but most of them are supported. Only some exotic ones are not supported. ZHA is easy to use. Installing was a blast, and pairing devices went without any problems. It went really, really, really well. It worked right out of the box. For the ZigBee devices that I paired with ZHA, a lot of entities were visible in Home Assistant. Actually, ZHA showed me the most entities of all the integrations. Creating an automation in Home Assistant based on the triggers that were provided worked really well. So that was also really good. Now let's go to ZigBee to MQTT. 
The installation of Zigbee to MQTT was more difficult than installing ZHA. I had to install the Mosquito Broker and I had to install Zigbee to MQTT and I had to connect the two together. And that took me quite some time to figure out how that worked. But in the end, when it worked, it was pretty stable. Then the coordinator support. Zigbee to MQTT doesn't support as much coordinators as ZHA, but still supports the most common ones, so it's quite okay. The device's support in Zigbee to MQTT is superb. Zigbee to MQTT supports by far the most devices of all of the integrations. It's a long list and it supports even the exotic ones. So that's really nice. Then the ease of use. It's okay. I mean, it has a nice interface, but it is a little bit techy. So that's why I didn't give it five stars because you need to be a little bit more technical to use Zigbee to MQTT. And the entities that were visible in Home Assistant were also not as many as I saw in ZHA. But that can also be because of the devices that I tested. And maybe for other devices, it might be the other way around. But I didn't test that. Automation triggers work the same as in ZHA. So setting up an automation was easy. There were a lot of triggers and the automation worked perfect. Now let's go over to decons. The installation of decons went pretty okay. I had to install an add-on. I had to make sure that the add-on accepts connections from Home Assistant. I had to remember an IP address and there were some other things that I had to do to get it running, but then in the end it was stable. Coordinator support is not that much because Decons is the official software that belongs to the Combi and Raspberry sticks, so it only supports the Combi and Raspberry sticks. Then devices support is also quite a lot, not as much as Zigbee to MQTT, but still a lot of devices are supported and there are only some exotic devices that are not supported by Decons. The ease of use is quite okay actually. The interface is pretty user friendly. There is an interface where you can pair your light bulbs and your switches and your motion sensors that is called Foscon. And that is quite a nice interface. So yeah, it's quite nice to use if you're not really technical. The entities that were visible in Home Assistant were not that many as that we saw in ZHA and in Zigbee to MQTT. So you have less entities to work with. And the automation triggers were also working fine. I set up an automation, I got a lot of triggers and the automation worked pretty fine. Now, let's go to the overview of all the three integrations and add-ons. As you can see, I have the same bullet points here as that I talked about in the previous slides, but those are not the only things that we have to take into consideration. There are more things to consider and I'm going to discuss them here. So let's go over them one by one. For the installation part, ZHA was by far the best integration. It worked right out of the box. I had no issues during installation and I did have issues with Zigbee to MQTT and with Decons. ZHA supports the most coordinators. That doesn't really need to be a problem, but it supports almost everything while the other integrations don't. Then the device support. Zigbee to MQTT is the absolute winner here but also ZHA and Foscon support a lot of devices, but they do not really support all the exotic ones. Then the ease of use. ZHA was the most easy to use integration, in my opinion. And in ZHA, the most entities were visible. Automation was for all three integrations or add-ons the same. And now we go to the new bullet points. Then the documentation, really important part. For all three integrations, there is documentation about the integration. But what about the documentation about the devices in the integration and what you can do with them? Well, Zigbee to MQTT 
has very good documentation on every device, as you can see here. Every device has some documentation about it and what you can do with it. For ZHA and DCONS, this does not exist. So I think that's a big plus for ZigBee 2 MQTT. Then another thing, over-the-air updates. Can you update the firmware of your devices using these integrations? Yes, you can. You can do it with all three of these integrations. But ZigBee to MQTT seems to support the most integrations here. Then binding. What does binding mean? Binding means that you can connect one ZigBee device straight to another ZigBee device so that it controls the other ZigBee device straight away. For instance, you can bind an IKEA remote to a light bulb so that it controls that light bulb straight away. Binding can be done by all three of the integrations or add-ons. Then another very important point. Will my ZigBee network stay alive when my Home Assistant instant is going down for an update or for a reboot? Well, for ZigBee to MQTT and for Decons, it does. But for ZHA, it doesn't. So if you use, for example, the binding option that I just told about, and you reboot Home Assistant, and you use ZHA, then you cannot control your lights anymore. But when you use ZigBee to MQTT or Decons when Home Assistant is down, you can still control your ZigBee lights. Then the tweak possibilities. This is more for power users. ZHA and Foscon do have possibilities to tweak settings, but ZigBee to MQTT has a huge interface where you can tweak a lot of things. So in this case, ZigBee to MQTT is the winner again. And now, drum roll. The winner is... Actually, I think there are two winners in my humble opinion. If you want easy and simple, then go for ZHA. It's easy to set up. You don't need a lot of technical knowledge and it works quite well. It supports a lot of devices, so you'll be fine. If you're more of a power user, then go to Zigbee to MQTT. You can tweak a lot. You can do a lot more fine graining of settings. And I think then you'll be fine with Zigbee to MQTT. So in my opinion, there are two winners for two different types of people. Oh, and one more thing. Always check if your devices are supported before you make your final choice. Just check if your devices are in the list of devices that are supported by the integration and then choose the right integration for you. I hope this video helped you. If so, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, tick the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.